Welcome back to the workshop. Now today I've got a new toy for the workshop. Uh, now this is a record power AC400 uh, two stage air filter. Uh, I bought this with my own money so I can say whatever I like about it but I've got a feeling I'm going to say some good things. Okay first of all before we get this out of the box uh, why do I need such a thing? Right, so although this is a very small workshop, uh, it's just for a hobby basically, uh, pretty much everything in here creates dust. Okay, we've got the bandsaw creates dust, table saw creates dust, the lathe creates dust, a, gr a grinder creates dust. Over here, another grinder creates dust. We've got a chop saw here, creates dust. A pillar drill creates a little bit of dust. Uh, but the most important one is sanding okay whenever you're sanding you end up creating so much dust uh, and now i've got the added problem where i've got uh, a couple of lasers as well and a cnc machine and they also create dust and smoke particles in the air okay that's why i need it because i'm fed up with breathing that rubbish in uh, now let me show you what i've got at the moment to handle this so at the moment, my main way of dealing with dust in the workshop and smoke in the workshop is this, which is a Scorpion, uh, it's basically a, an air filter because it's got a carbon filter. Now a carbon filter is not ideal for sawdust and that sort of stuff, but it's good for smells. Uh, I picked this up at a boot sale for about 15 pound. It's been excellent. It's quite noisy, but doesn't quite do what I need it to do, okay? And that's why I bought the record power. It doesn't take much to realize that if you uh, walk around the workshop, I walk slowly because some people will get a bit uh, travel sick. If you look, I've just cleaned up the workshop. Now look, we've got, we've got so much dust on here. It just settles everywhere. Okay, uh, it settles on the cupboard doors, all over the sides. Uh, this I've already cleaned off once and it's still dusty. Uh, and ironically, uh, this has been sitting on my uh, my workbench for a couple of days uh, and look this is covered in dust and I've already cleaned up. So let's get this out of the box, we'll have a look at it and then we'll try and install it and see how it goes. Right I'm sure you can all read uh, but I'll do it for you. Uh, this is the record power AC400 two-stage air filter with remote. Uh, free speed and a time delay, which I'll explain later. It's got a programmable timer, fine filtration up to one micron, uh, a remote control is included. It's got a two stage filtration, which is these two, I'll explain later. Uh, mounting hooks and chains included, which are these, uh, three speeds, and it's ideal for the small and medium workshop. Okay, this is a small workshop. This should be ideal. Right, let's open the box. Right, so this is everything you get in the box. Uh, you get the main body, which is obviously the motor and the filter. Uh, you get a remote control. You get some hooks to put it in the ceiling, some hooks to go in the top of this. You get four chains and you get some instructions. Okay, let's have a look at these quickly individually. Right, so first off, we get the exciting stuff, which is the uh, instructions, okay? You get three instruction books, okay? Obviously, one of them is in English. This one, I believe, is in French. And this one looks like it's in German, okay? I'm only interested in this one. Uh, let's have a quick click through the pages, see if there's anything interesting. Explanation of symbols, health and safety, more health and safety, uh, a guarantee, uh, now it tells you to check your contents obviously when you undo it, so obviously we've got the whole filter, the chains and the remote, we've done that, that's all present and correct. Uh, it gives you some specifications here, so let's have a quick look at these, here we go. Right, outer filter, 5 microns, inner filter, 1 micron, 
uh, gives you overall dimensions, which is length 514 millimeters, width 431 millimeters, height 258 millimeters. Uh, it gives you a sound rating here. So this is how loud it is on the three different speeds. Okay, so 69, 67 and 62 decibels. Uh, airflow, it tells you how much the airflow is. Uh, and high speed, 409 cubic feet per minute. Uh, medium speed, 362 cubic feet per minute. And low speed, 260 cubic feet per minute. Uh, now these should all be sufficient for this workshop. Okay, the motor at 230 volts, which is good because I'm in the UK at 50 hertz. It's an eighth of a horsepower uh, and 100 watts, okay? Full low current, 0.43 amps. Okay, it's got timer settings, uh, one, two, and four hours, which I'll show in a moment. And the overall weight is 14 kilograms. Okay, so that's your basic spec. Uh, it tells you here, basic operation, assembly. Um, yeah, what else do you need to know? Okay, it gives you some wiring diagrams, but obviously you probably won't get involved in this uh, unless you're going to be doing something uh, that you probably shouldn't do. Okay, as far as we're concerned, we just plug it in and it works. Okay, there's a breakdown here of all the parts uh, and it gives you uh, all the numbers here and it refers to this table here. So if you do need to uh, get so many spare parts, uh, this is what you'd have to look at. Okay, that's enough of that. That wasn't very interesting. Let's move on to the next bit. All right, the next part is this, which is the uh, remote control. Okay, um, it's powered by, let's have a look. Okay, two batteries, which you don't get with it. So I've stolen some out of uh, some toys. Okay, now these are obviously AA batteries. Okay, get those in here like this, and the back slides on. If you can't do this, then you probably wouldn't have a workshop anyway. Okay, that's in. Uh, three buttons, so it can't be simpler. Uh, you've got off, you've got on, and the speeds, so selecting the speeds with this one, and a timer. Okay, I'll show you this functionality in a minute. Okay, what's next? Okay, so this is all the hardware you get in the uh, little cardboard box. Uh, you get some hooks which actually go into the ceiling. Okay, uh, you can obviously put these in with a raw plug depending on what you're screwing it into. Uh, if it's going into wood, this should go straight in. Uh, you've got four other hooks which actually mount straight into the top of the, uh, the machine. These obviously come with these nuts. Uh -huh. If I can screw it on. Okay, these are actually locking nuts. And I'll show you how they work in a moment. And you get four chains, which obviously hook between the ones that are in the ceiling, okay, and the ones that are actually on the machine. Let's see if I can do this like that. Okay, I'll show you this all in a minute. That's all the hardware you get. So let's have a look at the main machine. All right, so this is the uh, main machine here. Now this is actually, although it looks like the front, this is actually the back, okay? Uh, this is where the air will come out. So this is clean air out on this side. Okay, you've got your control panel here, uh, some indication lights. Uh, your power supply is comes from here, which is this lead. Uh, I just measured it. It's about one and a half meters long. Uh, my one comes with this, which is a three pin standard UK plug because I'm obviously in the UK. Okay, uh, that's where you get on the front. Also, there's a fuse here by the looks of it. I haven't taken it out, but it looks like there's a fuse. Okay, we'll come to the controls in a second. Uh, on the side, we've got a pretty little sticker and it also says five year guarantee. Okay, the details of that are covered in the instructions. Uh, now, this is actually the front of the machine. Okay, this is where you've got your filters. Now you've got this outer filter, which is obviously the primary filter. This will filter out all the big stuff, which I believe was down to five microns. Okay, to release this filter, okay, you clip that clip and that clip, and it comes out, which is fair enough, that's easy enough. 
there's an arrow here, if you can see, there's an arrow there that tells you the direction of airflow. So it says airflow in, we know this is in, okay, so you shouldn't get it the wrong way around. Okay, uh, these are available separately, uh, or easy enough to buy. I think you can also get these off of Amazon, which is obviously where I bought this from. Okay, so that's the secondary, the primary filter. Uh, and in here you have the finer filter. Now this is the one that takes it down to one micron. Okay, so this is just a material filter. Uh, yeah, it's all very nice and soft. And at the moment it's nice and clean. Okay, uh, let's have a quick look inside. Right, before we have a look in here, let's have a quick look at these filters. Uh, okay, this is the uh, inner filter. This is one that takes it down to one micron. Uh, there's no part numbers on this by the looks of it, but there's a, a foam seal around the edge here. So when it actually goes into here, it seals around the edge. Okay, uh, and on the primary filter or the first stage filter, uh, that's the dimensions, just in case you want to find some. And there's the airflow. Okay, and the uh, metal mesh goes on the inside. Right, so we're looking here at the motor. Okay. Not much to see in here. Uh, we've got a metal gauze here, which stops you putting your hands in to uh, get them chopped off by the motor. Uh, you can actually see the motor here uh, in the background. Let's get me torch in there so you can see. In the background there, you can see the back of the controller. Uh, and there's not much else in here, really. Uh, under here, you can see the top of, that's where the mounting hook eyes go through. There's another one on this side. Okay, nothing else in there of very interest. All right, let's uh, quickly put the filters back in. All right, refitting the filters uh, couldn't really be simpler. You literally take your inner filter and stick it in there. As I say, it's got this foam around the outside to give it a good seal. That pushes in until it comes to a stop. Okay. That's all good. Uh, and then the outer filter, know where the air flow goes. It just sits in there like that. That's the bit you can replace. And these clips just clip over. All right, so that's the inside. Right. Quick look at this control panel. Right, this control panel is very similar in function to a lot of the other ones of a similar design. Okay, you've literally got your high, medium and low settings. So these light up when you're on high, medium or low. Uh, you've got a timer. Now, the timer, one, two, or four hours. The idea of this is if you're leaving your workshop, okay, or you've been doing some sanding, the workshop's a bit dusty, what you can do is you can set the timer so it stays on for an hour or stays on for two hours or stays on for four hours. Then it will automatically turn itself off. Okay, I'll show you these lights a light in a moment and I'll show you how they react with this. Okay, so I think now the next thing to do is to plug it in. Okay, so the unit is now plugged in. Uh, the controls you've got on here, you control by these two little black buttons here. Um, and you can also obviously control it by the remote control. So let's try these first. Uh, this is on and changing the speed, so on. Okay, looks like it defaults to, comes on high first, then defaults to low. Push it again, medium. Push it again. High, okay, back to low. Turn it off is the off button. That's simple enough. Now, obviously, if I want to use the timer function, I think you have to use the remote control, okay? So, normal on and off with the remote. Yeah, single press, high, then low. Press it again, medium, press it again, high. Okay, now if I want to put it on 
timer, you then just push this button. Okay, once gives you one hour timer. Twice gives you two hours. Thrice gives you four hours. Okay, so that will turn off after four hours. But obviously if you want to stop it all, just push the off button. All right, so timer and on and off on the remote and just speed on here. Right, excellent. Now let's think about mounting this thing. Right, so if you're going to suspend this from the ceiling uh, with the hooks, then what you need to do is there's four bolts here. One, two, three, four. Now what you need to do is remove those. Now they're 10 mil. All you need to do is loosen those and remove them. Uh, they've also got a Phillips type head in them. So if you haven't got a 10 mil spanner, you can also use a screwdriver. Once these are all removed, uh, what you need to do then is get these with the, uh, the black rubberized coating and a nut. Okay, now what you need is the, uh, the actual pan of the nut, so the flat bit goes at the bottom. You thread those on, and it recommends you thread them most of the way on. Okay, so I've got it right up to the edge there. Okay, then these just screw straight into the machine. Okay, now if you're a bit of a, a lazy sud like me, uh, there's a way you can get these in quicker. Let me show you what that is. Right, so you've obviously got to wind four of these in. Uh, if you're a little bit lazy like me, uh, here's a little trick that you can do to actually wind them in quicker. Now what you do is you get one of the other hooks, okay? You mount it into your drill, okay? So you then got this, and all you do, you put it on low, hook it on, and wind it in, okay? Uh, that's quicker. Right, I'm gonna quickly do the others. All right, so once all of your hooks are in, uh, what, I'm, what I will do is line them all up so they're all facing the right way, because then that way my OCD doesn't play me up. Uh, and then all you do is you literally nip up each of the locking nuts Okay, and that should stop them from coming undone. Okay, that's those done. Now we've got to mount it on the ceiling. Right, so actually mounting it on the ceiling, uh, it does say that you should have it at least 2.3 meters from the ground. Now, I don't know whether that's a particular reason for filtering or whether that's just to stop you bumping your head on it. Okay, so you can hang it by these uh, or you can put it on a shelf, uh, but either way, you've got to make sure it's secure. Now, obviously I'm limited for head height here. Uh, what I need to do is make sure that the front of the filter, so this part, is actually into the workshop. So any dust that's in the workshop will get sucked into it. Don't put it in a corner. Uh, don't put it flat up against the wall with the filter being blocked or the outlet being blocked. Okay, now I think for me, for now, it's going to be best probably about here uh, because this is where I do most of my sanding. Okay, as usual, uh, the workshop has limitations and this limitation is the head height. Now, I know you're supposed to have this a certain distance off the ground, which it will be, just about, uh, but I can't use the chains because it will hang too low, okay? But what I do have is I have these two rails on the ceiling. Now, this is where my lights are, okay? These LED lights can slide along this rail, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this rail uh, and a couple of metal poles uh, to mount this to the rail. Okay, so let me show you how I'm gonna do that. Right, so how am I gonna use these metal rails? Uh, now, I'm gonna use the existing uh, hooks here, okay? I've loosened them off again. Uh, what I'm gonna do is put this pole through the hooks, okay? Now, that won't fall out, but it can move side to side, okay? So what I'm gonna do is rotate these, 
okay, and then nip them up the same as you would do normally. Okay, nip, nip, okay, and that will stop some moving side to side. Okay, and then the same again on this one. Okay, now, how's this gonna work? Uh, let me show you. Right, I'm standing on the stool now, as you can see. Uh, it's a bit tricky to film up here because the lights are interfering, but I'll try my best, okay? Right, so I've got my metal poles here and I've got my rails. Now, on each of the rails, I've now cut out a little groove, okay? So there's a groove on that side and a corresponding groove on this side. And the idea is that these poles fit in here, if I can get them in, okay? They'll fit through those grooves and then they can slide along, okay? Now, the idea is it all remains square on the top of the filler and then it doesn't fall out. Uh, but let's try and get it mounted up on here first. Uh, it should really be a two man job, but I've got to do it on my own. So let's give it a go. Right, so that's it now up in position. Uh, it looks like there's enough head height, but the only annoying thing is the cable. Now, this cable here is far too short. Like it's plugged in over here, which is the closest plug. Uh, it's just a bit too short. It needs to be another three foot long, uh, longer. So that means I've either got to move this further down the rail, which I don't really want to do because this is the inlet. And obviously this is where I do most of my sanding. Uh, so we'll see how we get on with that. I may have to move it further down that way. Or alternatively, what I could do is I could put it up that end a little bit further. Okay, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so there, it's obviously now in position. Uh, let's try the remote control. One, two, three. That's good. And off. Right, so that should replace this little fella. Right, I did have a whole series of tests lined up to, uh, to show you how efficient this thing is, including how long it would take to get from a certain level of pollution in the workshop, uh, because I have got a uh, air quality meter, which uh, I covered in another video. So if you look at this video here, it actually shows you about the type of particles that you can get in the air. Okay, I was gonna do that test. Uh, I was gonna check how long it takes to clear the, uh, the workshop. Uh, I was also gonna check airflow and how it all goes, but the video would end up being too long. Uh, so all I'm gonna do is quickly show you the differences using this, which is my uh, anemometer, which is just basically something for measuring airflow, uh, just to give you an idea of the amount of air that's actually coming out of this, okay? Uh, so all I'm gonna do is on the three different settings, low, medium, and high, uh, I'm gonna show you the amount of air that's actually exiting this thing, okay? Because it seems quite breezy, which means I could actually use it as a cooling fan during the summer. Uh, so let's quickly try that. Right, so hopefully you can see that uh, because it's quite tricky to film. Now this is up on the ceiling. Uh, now I've got this in units of cubic meters per second. Okay, just to give you an indication of how much airflow is coming through. So let's turn it on to low speed. Okay, low speed. About 5.6 cubic meters per second. Medium speed. 5.9. And high speed. 6.3. Okay, so that's quite blowy. I just uh, said how difficult it is to film this sort of stuff. Uh, just getting that reading there. Uh, I've got my tripod standing on a stool in the middle of the workshop in front of a fan. 
Now, if that had fallen over, that would have been this phone knackered. Right, I think that's about it for now. Right, so that's about it for this video. Uh, that's all about the uh, AC400 record power air filter. Okay, so two stage air filter. In theory, it should take it all down to uh, about one micron. Okay, which should be a beneficial to this shop. Okay, this can replace my old filter. I'm not entirely convinced this is the right place for it. Uh, I might have to move it. I may put it on the shelf that uh, the old filter was on. Okay. The lead's too short, uh, I can adjust that, okay? But for now, I'm gonna check this out and see how it gets on. Uh, if I have any problems, I will let you know, but I think this is gonna be good for the workshop, okay? Right, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. So at the moment, again because it was in rubbish. How do we do that? I don't know how to do that. Let me check the instructions. What's going on? Done that one too far. Let's do that all again because I wasn't organised. It doesn't work because I've turned it off. <coughs> A bit dusty in here, I think I didn't feel. <coughs>